In Minecraft, villager trading is one of the most complex things you can do. The primary purpose of trading with the game's non-playable characters mostly boils down to removing all of the randomization from enchanting, and gaining access to special enchantments you can't get any other way. This includes the Mending Enchantment, which allows any equipped tools and armor to eat experience orbs you pick up and restore the item's durability. This effectively means you can craft the most expensive equipment in the game, and then prevent it from ever breaking. It's tedious to build out the infrastructure to do this, but it also means you can easily recreate any enchanted equipment if you should lose it. So, now that you know what the main payoff for villager trading is, let's go over exactly how you make a trading hall. The first thing you need to do is figure out where the villagers will come from, with three distinct options. You either find an existing village and reinforce it, or awkwardly relocate just enough NPCs from the village to populate a different location, or forget finding a village and instead trap at least two randomly spawned zombie villagers and cure them to then populate a location of your choosing. We'll start with the most difficult option, curing zombified villagers, which begins with brewing. You need to craft a fermented spider eye by combining a spider eye with sugar and a brown mushroom. Then run that through a brewing stand with bottles of water to create potions of weakness, and run those potions through the stand again with gunpowder to make splash potions of weakness. The second thing you'll need is a golden apple, one for each zombie villager you plan to cure, crafted from a normal apple surrounded by eight gold ingots. With both Potion and Golden Apple in hand, you want to find and trap a zombie villager in a small box with a roof so they won't burn in the sunlight. This is by far the most difficult part, as zombie villagers are NOT common spawns, and trapping one is an awkward task. It's worth mentioning you can trap any mob, including zombie villagers, in a boat so they don't despawn if you need extra time to get the materials together for a cure. Anyways, once you have a zombie villager safely trapped, you want to throw the splash potion of weakness at it, then feed it the golden apple the same way you would place a block. There will be a loud electric noise, and the zombie will begin to shake. Then, after about five minutes, the zombie villager will turn back into a normal villager, who you can move to a new location, same as any other villager you would find in the world. This brings us to the second method of starting a trading hub, relocating existing villagers. If you have an existing location you want to house villagers at, you'll have to relocate them. Moving them is a challenging task though, as there's no way to truly direct NPCs, and the only real options are to essentially trap them in a small box, place a minecart or a boat, and wait for them to accidentally get into it, or awkwardly push them into one. Then you either move them along a rail line or a canal to their new home. Again, all of this is an awkward process to do, which is why if you choose to either cure zombie villagers or relocate existing villagers, it's advisable you only move two and then give them the necessary things they need to reproduce. This brings us to the last method of making a trading hall though, modifying an existing village. Regardless of if you relocate villagers or build up an existing village, all methods need to lead to a well-lit and reinforced location where the NPCs live. No matter how it's designed, the goal is to both keep the villagers safe from random mob spawns, but also help guard against pillager raids. Raids are specifically triggered when you enter a village after you gain the Ill Omen debuff, which is gained after you kill the captain of a scouting party. Raids are messy and complicated, so we won't cover them here. For now, just know that you can significantly reduce the chances of them happening by building proper defenses and lighting up the area. As an added note though, if you do get the Ill Omen debuff before you enter a village and don't want to trigger a raid, get a bucket, milk a cow, and drink down the whole pail to remove the debuff. Anyway, with the topic of finding villagers and location defenses covered, let's move on to the nitty-gritty mechanics of populating a village. After you've secured where the villagers live, you'll need more of them, meaning they'll have to reproduce. The rule surrounding villager breeding is simple. Villagers first need a bed to sleep in with two open blocks above it, an extra bed nearby for any offspring to claim after they're born, and enough food in their inventory that totals up to 12 food points. 
Feeding villagers is as simple as tossing food in front of them and letting them pick it up. However, villagers are only interested in four types of food. Bread, carrots, potatoes, and beetroots. Bread is worth four points, while all the rest, carrots, potatoes, and beetroots, are only worth one food point each. After two villagers have beds of their own, have access and can walk to an extra bed, have enough food, and are not on cooldown after previously mating, they will attempt to reproduce. If successful, they will get close and emit hearts above them, after which a child villager will spawn. If something isn't right though, either nothing will happen, or they may emit anger particles, likely meaning that they want to have a child but can't reach an extra bed. This part is where you have to be the most patient, as villagers cannot be rushed when increasing a village's population. The resultant child villager takes 20 minutes or one full Minecraft day to age into an adult. Until then, they will run aimless around, but like the adults, return to their bed during the night. If you want villagers to always be in specific locations, it's during the night that you can block them into small spaces so they can't get lost effectively forcing them to sleep under their desks. On the note of desks though, now that you know the process to repeat over and over to populate a village or trading hub, let's look at how to assign jobs to villagers so you can begin to trade with them. In Minecraft, there are a total of 13 different jobs or professions that villagers can have. Each one is assigned by crafting and placing a job station where the villager can reach it. If you're trying to be precise about which villagers get which jobs, be careful about where you place any of the blocks you see on screen, which function as job stations. In this particular guide, we won't cover what the actual jobs are, as that's saved for a different, more in-depth video. Instead, we'll focus on how to assign, change, and optimize job roles. To assign a job role, simply place the associated workstation where a villager without a job can reach it. Once they recognize the station, their clothing or outfit will change, and if you interact with them the same way you place a block, a trading interface will open. It's important to understand that before you trade with a villager, their profession, and by extension what they buy and sell, is not permanent. This means that if you get a villager who sells something rare or has a particularly good deal, you need to trade with them immediately. It's only by bartering with them that their inventory is marked as permanent, and you no longer need to worry about their trades changing. Because villagers can lose their job though, you can effectively manipulate what they buy or sell, and in some cases, how much those trades are worth. By removing a villager's associated job station before you buy or sell anything with them, you can strip them of their job and thus their trades. The cycle goes like this. Place the job station, check their trades. If you don't like them, remove the station, repeat. This is the fundamental method by which you get good trades. Basically, hiring and firing workers over and over until they offer the trade you want. Villagers also level up their profession as you trade with them. There are five levels of proficiency, starting at the bottom with novice, followed by apprentice, then journeyman, expert, and master. Every time a villager levels up, they gain access to new trades, which can lead to rare things to buy, but more often opens up increasingly efficient ways to gain emeralds. However, villagers can't infinitely trade and will have to periodically restock their inventory. They do this by interacting with their workstation, which you can't force them to do. In addition to all of this, the value of trades can be slightly higher or lower based on your reputation in the village. You boost reputation mostly by leveling up villager professions, and you lose reputation by hitting, attacking, or killing any villager or iron golems that function as their guardian. In the event you need to dispose of a villager, if, say, you get the exact same trade but at a vastly better price, the easiest option is by drowning. Simply get the villager into a two-block deep hole, put a roof over the top so they can't get out, and place water in the uppermost space. Using this method is qualified as an accident, and leaves your hands clean. Even though you're a filthy, murdering piece of- It's also possible to get extremely low prices on some items if the villager you trade with was once a zombie villager whom you cured. For instance, you can get a high-level enchantment used on every last item that ever touches an anvil for just one emerald if your dedicated, 
or lucky enough. That's an extreme case of min-maxing, though. Just to make things crystal clear here, though, you have to cure them. If it's your friend who feeds them the golden apple, they have done the curing, therefore they get the discount, not you. Anyway, that's a fairly detailed rundown of how you assign, modify, and optimize jobs. Normally, that would be everything, but there are a few particularly crucial bits of technical information about Minecraft as a game or program and how they apply to villagers and trading. First is a game setting called Mob Griefing. By default, this feature is set to true, but if for any reason it is set to false, it makes it so Endermen can't pick up blocks and when creepers explode, they won't destroy the landscape. However, this also makes it so villagers can't pick objects up, meaning they can't accept food and thus will never have enough to try and reproduce. The simple solution to this is to turn mob griefing on by typing in this game command to set it to true. Importantly, if you're on a multiplayer server, this is a setting only an administrator can adjust. The second technical note is for anyone playing on the console or bedrock version of Minecraft. It is possible for your villagers to just randomly vanish. That's right, after building an entire trading hall and carefully locking in trades, it is possible, under the right circumstances, for villagers to just disappear. This bug does not affect the Java edition of Minecraft, just bedrock and console. The problem is derived from a wider game flaw that affects all entities, including minecarts and animals. Minecraft game data is written, stored, and loaded as 16x16 16 16 block sections reaching from bedrock to world height, called chunks. Basically, if any entity moves from one chunk to another, and then those chunks are unloaded because you either quit the game or move away from the area, there is a chance the game will just forget those entities exist. To get around this, you need to figure out where the chunk borders lie, and build your trading hall in such a way that villagers will always occupy the same chunk, and never move between chunks forever. Doing this reduces the chances of activating the bug by a significant margin, making it nearly impossible to happen. That being said, nearly impossible is not the same as absolutely impossible. Keep these details in mind when building a trading hub when playing Minecraft on console or bedrock. That's pretty much the brass tacks of getting a villager trading hub together in Minecraft. However, if you need more information on the jobs, which ones to get, or how to build automated farms to speed up trading, then click or tap the screen to keep watching and learn even more. If you enjoyed watching or found this guide helpful, it was made possible by viewer funding. If you want to help support the creation of more content like this, please consider contributing. You can find links in the description or visit strife.solutions to do so. Until next time though, I'm William Strife, and I'll see you next time.